For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. On Tuesday, lawmakers and advocates spoke at a press conference to voice support for continued funding for the Perpich Center for Arts Education. Following a highly critical report from the Office of the Legislative Auditor, House Republicans have proposed closing the school. Supporters of the school hope it can remain open while implementing necessary changes. The Perpich Center is a two-year arts high school open to students from all around the state and was created by the legislature in 1985. Here's that press conference. Uh, so thank you everyone uh, for coming this morning. Um, uh, we are waiting for Senator Latz. As you know, um, sometimes things come up around here. So he has an amendment up right now in judiciary. So he will head on down as soon as possible. So I'm gonna pinch it for my senator um, and uh, uh, MC this. Um, so my name is Peggy Flanagan. Um, I'm a state representative from District 46A, uh, which is St. Louis Park, Golden Valley, Plymouth, and Medicine Lake. Uh, Perpich Center for the Arts is in my district, um, and I am happy to be here today. Um, Perpich has traditionally allowed the students it serves to fully be themselves uh, to, while excelling academically and artistically. Unfortunately, those core values are under threat, um, and they were under threat under the past leadership structure. That said, I am pleased that the Perpich Center for the Arts Education is now in turnaround mode. Um, thanks to uh, these folks standing behind me. With a new board and new executive director, fresh leadership is working overtime to implement the many changes recommended by the Office of the Legislative Auditor just a few months ago. I feel confident in the direction that the new leaders are taking purpose and certainly think we owe them the chance to make changes um, before we take the radical step of abolishing purpose altogether and leaving students and families stranded. I sincerely hope um, that we are able to take the time to listen to the real stories of Perpich students who stand to lose one of, um, who stand to lose the most from this legislation. And I'm counting on Governor Dayton to block anything as extreme as complete ab um, abolition of the Perpich Center for the Arts. Uh, so with that, I would like to um, invite uh, Susan Draves up. She is the mom of Hope, a junior concentrating in theater at Perpich Arts High. And Susan is a regional coordinator for health and nutrition programs with the University of Minnesota Extension Service in Rochester. Susan. Hello, yes, I'm Susan Draves. I live in Lake City, Minnesota. I'm the mother of four, and my youngest, Hope, is a junior at Perpich. Throughout the years in Southeast Minnesota, I have observed many graduates of Perpich and have been really, really impressed by their success. And when it came, became clear to me that my daughter was kind of over the top creative, I had this feeling in my gut that Perpich might just be the place for her. So I'm the one that came to her in her sophomore year and said, you know, there's this school and she looked it up online herself and said, Mom, yeah, let's go check this out. So we did. We went through and did the visit and the admissions process. And fast forward to today, two years later, and Hope is immersed and thriving in a supportive creative arts community that challenges her to explore and grow beyond anything I could have ever imagined. Her arts area focuses theater, and she's also in a community where she can explore dance and music and media arts, other interests that she just seems to have. She's willingly engaged in all her classes, eager to go to school. She has just a passion for learning that um, I just never saw before. And believe it or not, she hasn't missed a single day of school <laughs> this entire year. She loves school. So I believe she's grown more mature, responsible, and has really increased self-efficacy. And it's just amazing to see. So Perpich really does help kids find their voice. And academic rigor is sound. Um, the teachers seem to just guide students and and allow them and encourage them to become creative problem solvers um, and critical thinkers, which I think are really important skills in today's world. Um, as a Perpich parent, I consider myself a front row witness 
to um, the, the <laughs> audit. And believe me, um, I think it's been a real wake-up call. That's exactly what it was supposed to be. And it has been taken very seriously. Um, I've seen per Perpich board members respond proactively to the audit from the get-go. I've seen continual transparency um, and an effort to keep open lines of communication with parents um, via uh, weekly e-newsletters and continuous flow of information through email. Um, there's a well thought out action plan to make Purpich Arts High School better than ever and it is well underway. So um, meanwhile, all the students keep plugging along and winning awards statewide and nationally and it's just absolutely amazing to watch. So ultimately, this is not just about my daughter, but um, really the opportunity for all artistic kids throughout the state to continue to have the opportunity that Governor Perpich and his wife Lola laid out many years ago. So thank you. Uh, well, thank you. As, as you all know, there's a lot going on around the Capitol right now. And we have the Public Safety Judiciary Conference Committee. I jumped out of to come down here. Um, I want to uh, uh, thank you all for being here, um, and especially the, uh, those who are directly connected to the Perpich Center itself. Um, you know, I grew up a few blocks from there long before it was the Perpich Center. Uh, and, uh, and since I've been elected uh, first uh, to the House and then to the Senate, I've carried all the legislation to support the Perpich Center uh, with their funding requests, um, their capital budgets, um, and their bonding needs. Um, and uh, in that process, I've learned a lot about the institution. And I've been over there quite a bit personally. Um, I've uh, walked through the buildings. I've sat in on some of the performances, um, had long conversations uh, with staff and board members over the years. And I firmly believe that this is an institution which has great value to all of our students and to our communities across the state. Uh, and it's proven that value, uh, not only as a place for students who didn't find their space in another educational institution, uh, those that didn't quite fit in, that didn't quite understand what they wanted to do and weren't enthusiastic, uh, needed to find a different and a better place like Hope did. Um, I uh, just found out over the weekend that um, the uh, son of a friend of my family um, bounced around at three other schools before he landed at Perpich. And uh, he's graduating now. He's a terrific saxophone player. Uh, and uh, he's been accepted at quite a few schools around the country. Uh, and he's been playing adult gigs for a couple of years. I mean, that's the kind of talent uh, that, uh, that you find there. And, and he's thriving, too. Uh, and, uh, and I had uh, <clears throat> a lobbyist who told me about his wife. Un until we established this... Uh, this press conference idea, I didn't even know. I've known him for many years. Um, and uh, in fact, she had submitted uh, um, a letter to me. Her name is Naomi Dean. She was class of 92 at Perpich Center from uh, a rural farm town um, in Minnesota. She couldn't be here today. She's a teacher now, and she's working. Uh, but she didn't find her place either until she ended up at Perpich Center, where she thrived. Um, I've got letters or emails uh, from Adam Martin, an alum, Linda Berger, who is now a professor of music at St. Olaf College, Sarah Manley from the class of 92, uh, Joa, I'm going to mess up this last name, Ichinho, who's a teacher at Perpich now, uh, and, uh, and others who you will hear from yet in this, uh, this press conference. Did you mention why Sue is not here? Okay, uh, Sue Perpich was scheduled to be here. As you know, she's the daughter of our late governor, uh, Rudy Perpich, and of Lola. Um, she had a family medical matter she had to attend to, so she couldn't join us here today. Uh, but she, of course, would like to see her family legacy uh, continued. And indeed, the family regards Perpich Center as a legacy because they were so dedicated to education 
and to the arts. In, in my view, Perpich is unique not only because it's a very good arts education school uh, and because the benefits of the audit will give it the path forward and because their new board chair and new board members, including some very experienced education uh, folks uh, with uh, Ms. Workman, who's from the, uh, you know, the Rochester School Board Chair, is serving now on the Perpich Center Board. But also because it serves a very unique role in Minnesota. There's a synergy at an institution like Perpich where you've got the arts education component and the value of assisting with arts education throughout the state. And you've got the students right there who are learning about arts education, and they're going through that process. And so educators who are dedicated to the art of education, as well as to art education, have the classroom right in front of them. And they can try new techniques, they can use new materials, they can see what works best, what doesn't. Um, and they can utilize that knowledge and information to develop curricula, to identify what material is most valuable to distribute statewide, uh, to make it available to classrooms all across the state. Uh, and you don't find many institutions that have those two functions together in the same place. And that synergy, in my view, is what makes Perpich unique uh, and very special and well worth saving in addition to the value it's given to individual students who have only found their niche at the Perpich Center. Uh, and that's why I'm fighting so hard uh, to give Perpich the opportunity to spend the next year showing us if they can get the job done, responding to the audit. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they can't, they can't. Um, and then we address those issues down the road. But I think they deserve at least a year to show if they can uh, uh, re-energize, reform, repackage the Perpich mission in such a way that serves all of Minnesota the way uh, its original visionaries expected that it would serve all of Minnesota. Uh, so I'd like to see Perpich survive for another year. And to do that, we need to convince uh, the House, basically, uh, to back off of their position of dismantling Perpich. You can't replace what happens at Perpich with one administrator in the Department of Education who's going to send some emails and some materials out across the state. You just can't. Uh, so give us one more year and see what Perpich can do. And I got a feeling that next year we'll be back uh, applauding uh, what the institution has accomplished. Uh, so I want to turn it back to those who are in a much better position than I am uh, to tell you what's valuable about Perpich and what direction they're going to be going. And I'll stick around as long as I can. but. Uh, we're going to take a vote at some point upstairs. I'll have to be there. So thank you very much. Uh, I'd now like to ask Cynthia Rowe uh, to come on up. She's a 1992 graduate of Perpich Center for the Arts. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what my experience at Perpich was and why it's such an important place to me and deserves to be supported. Uh, I'm a 1992 graduate. I studied music. Um, we were the second class to graduate from the school, which was very exciting. I grew up out in the northwest suburbs from a very um, large school district, very traditional um, educational background. And that was very good, and it provided me a nice, solid foundation I would have gone on had I stayed at my home school to be just fine in life. I would have managed okay in college and life. But the two years that I spent at the Perpich Center really shaped who I am as a person and how I navigate the world as an adult in ways that no other educational experience has. The real strength of the Perpich Center is that kids come from all over the state and they have very different backgrounds. You've got kids whose Families are financially well off, and kids whose families really struggle to make some of those uh, basic needs. You've got uh, kids who have been fortunate enough to have some kind of arts education available to them in their communities, whether it's you know teachers or band or 
arts classes and other kids where those resources just aren't available in their community and they've had to kind of figure that stuff out for themselves. The really interesting thing about Perpich is putting people with those very different experiences together in the same spot and making something really interesting happen. Unlike our home schools where uh, kids would have a, a common thread that carries throughout their educational experience, a common story, a shared background, you don't really have that at Perpich because of all of these different places that people come from. So it really gives you an interesting opportunity to get to know each student and find out where your commonality, commonalities lie and where things are different. And when you're working on a problem together, you no longer have this little piece and this we shared story to work from. You have this connection and then all of this huge, pardon me, this huge wealth of knowledge and experience that the diversity of the students bring to the table. And the Perpich faculty are just amazing and they really embrace that. They teach you, um, they teach you obviously some information and basics, but more importantly, they teach you how to think and how to look at problems so that you really can learn for yourself. They really inspire you to look for different ways to learn and constantly keep that alive. Um, you, whether you're facing an academic problem or an arts-related problem, they tell you to look at it and look again and look from a different angle and think about it, think harder, think differently, talk to other people about it, find out what they're thinking. And that process of looking at one problem from many different lenses really helps give you a better understanding of what the issue is that you're dealing with, and it brings solutions to the table that you might not have ever thought of. That skill, for me, has been very helpful. I am a lawyer and have been working in uh, largely complex litigation and legal business consulting matters for the last 17 years here in town, and I use that skill every single day. I use it in my music, but I also use it in my work. It helps me. It's the same analysis and the same way of approaching a problem, whether you're dealing with an individual who is scared and alone and they are facing the most personal problem you can possibly imagine, to dealing with a complex litigation matter where tens of millions of dollars are at stake and you have to figure out how to work with different people who have different focuses um, to really figure out what, how to best approach that problem, how to solve it, and how to reach a better solution than you would have if everyone had just been kind of focused on their own little piece of the puzzle. We're here obviously today because not everyone believes that Perpich deserves a chance to prove itself and that the funding should be cut right away. And to people who have that opinion, I implore you, before you make that decision, look at this through a different lens. Go to the Perpich Center, go to a performance, go to a gallery opening, an open house, anything. Just get a piece of that experience so that you better understand what it is that you are looking at potentially shutting down. When you walk in the door, you're immediately surrounded by artwork on all of the walls. You hear music coming down from one hall. You hear dancers practicing in the studio downstairs. And everywhere throughout the school, you see these little clusters of kids, and they are just heads down focused, whether it's a school-related thing or a project that they're working on. Their passion, their dedication, their focus, and their hard work are absolutely undeniable, and we need more people like that in the society. The Perpich Center really hones those skills and they develop people to continue to follow that passion and just jump in with everything they have for whatever they are working on. We need more of that. Perpich Center is important to the individuals who go there and are immediately touched by it. And it's very important to our society to have more people who can think in those different ways and look at problems differently. And without Perpich Center, I think we would be losing out on a lot of opportunities for some really creative problem solving in a time where we really need that in our world. So um, please support Perpich, and um, if you have reservations about it, before you decide, please experience a little bit of it so that you can make a more informed decision, because I think the spirit of it and the energy and enthusiasm speak for themselves. Thank you. I 
am very cognizant of the time. Um, we started a little late, and so I'm just going to ask the rest of the, the folks to keep your comments brief because I assume that the media also has um, some questions. Um, so I'd like to ask Julie Workman, who's the uh, vice chair of the board of directors, to speak. I'm, uh, I'm also from Rochester, and I spent 36 years teaching orchestra in the Rochester Public Schools, and I'm currently chair of the Rochester School Board. Now is not the time to shut down the Perpich Center for Arts Education. The state has invested 32 years in this agency's essential work, and to close it before a fresh board and leadership have sufficient time to respond to the audits from the Office of the Legislative Auditor in January is neither prudent nor reasonable. The new Perpich Board and the senior leadership team have made significant headway in responding to and correcting operations at Perpich. Within two weeks of receiving the financial and program audits, the board passed a unanimous resolution recommending to the legislature the conveyance of Crosswinds Art and Science School in Woodbury from purchase Perpich to another school district by June 30th, 2017. We absolutely support this primary recommendation in the program audit. When Crosswinds is conveyed, sold, or transferred to another state entity, Perpich Center for Arts Education will successfully move forward and thrive in the next year and beyond. This is an essential step that must take place during this session in order for Perpich to fulfill its mission. We have been consulting regularly and widely with both Republican and Democratic legislators, informing them of progress in all areas cited in the legislative audits. Every single item in the financial audit has been addressed successfully. The program audit responses are ongoing and require close cooperation with the legislature. We are actively pursuing solutions there working on numerous issues simultaneously. We have made enormous strides in the 15 weeks since the audits were released, and we're not slowing down. We strongly believe that Perpich must survive and grow in the years to come, and we believe that working closely with the legislature, this will happen. We believe Perpich will again be a strong leader in the arts in Minnesota, providing a rich environment for students and arts educators and a leader for the future of the state's creative economy. Thank you. And if Peg Burke, executive director, could come up. Thank you. I'm actually the interim executive director, and this is the 10th turnaround uh, of a nonprofit that I have done in my career following a legal career. And because of time, I'm going to cut right to the chase. Good governance is everything. And Perpich now has a dedicated and talented board of directors that, as you've heard from Ms. Workman, is working very, very diligently to turn Perpich around. But we're just at the beginning of turning it around. And we are making great progress. Agency leadership is united, and we are working closely not only with the board of directors, but with all of the stakeholders throughout Minnesota. We will have a new ex permanent executive director in place this summer. The board is planning a strategic planning retreat, and we will continue to forge ahead. We know how many students and educators and communities depend upon us to provide professional development, research, and leadership in the arts and arts education. Abolishment of Perpich would be an enormous loss for the state of Minnesota. Thank you. And then finally, Ahava Silky Jones, who's the principal of Perpich. To abolish Perpage would be to abolish the dreams of hundreds and hundreds of young Minnesota artists. In spite of political challenges, the Perpage community continues to thrive. This year, we've seen 97 students win scholastic honors, hosted over 60 professional guest artists, many of whom were alumni, had a student named as a National Merit Scholar, 
and received acceptances to some of nation's most prestigious colleges, conservatories, and universities. I came to Purpage because of its heart, energy, and hope. I'm now fighting for Purpage because I've seen firsthand the impact of Purpage on not only our students, but on our educators and affiliates statewide. Purpage brings to the forefront the creative process and demands that students develop the tools and skills to redesign our world. If we lose Purpage, we lose a generation of students statewide trained for the 21st century workforce. I'm confident that our parents, students, and prospective applicants know this. We've seen the admissions process remain highly competitive this year, both academically and artistically. We are committed to equity, and our incoming class reflects this. We continue to reimagine the way in which we can best serve our stakeholders. And most importantly, we continue to produce quality, community-changing work. Purpage isn't just one success story. The stories are innumerable, each unique, and together undeniable. Thank you. Thank you. And then we just open it up to any questions. So any questions at all, either for legislators or, more importantly, the people here? We were still waiting for the final compromise bill to come down. Any, do you have a sneak peek at it at all? Can you enlighten us? Is this included? Is the cut still included in the, uh, in the final bill, E-12 bill? I, I haven't heard. It may anymore. surprise you to know. Uh, that I have also not heard <laughs> as a member of the DFL minority. Uh, what, what made me particularly nervous was that uh, Senator Nelson, uh, who is the, uh, Carla Nelson, who's the lead, or who's the conference committee chair for the education side, uh, indicated to me that the House was really dug in in that position to dismantle Purpose and take the money and do something else with it. And it clearly was not, I mean, she supports Purpose. But it's not among her most important priorities in the bill. Um, so I thought it important for us to help make it a more important priority in the bill so that the Senate position will prevail uh, ultimately in that process. Are you, if, if this stays in the bill and it passes, are you urging the governor to, to veto the entire E-12 bill because of this? Well, I don't think I'm at the point of urging the governor to veto the education bill. Uh, but we do want to emphasize how important it is to have you to have this in the bill. And, you know, look, it's, it's not a big part of the bill, right? But it's a really big part of the lives of people who are here and the many students who um, have done that. And I think the bottom line is just to give these folks a chance. Right? The legislative audit report just came out, right, in January of this year. And um, I believe that, again, um, folks are, are really committed and, and need the opportunity to, to turn it around. And we should give that to them. How has this uh, just this bill itself, the, the bill to, to eliminate uh, the school, how's that affected enrollment uh, and uh, for next year? Thank you for that question. Um, we're actually very enthusiastically shocked that it hasn't dramatically had an impact on the number of applicants we've seen. Of course, we have a long-term plan to increase enrollment over the next few years, but uh, we've seen steady applications and a very competitive applicant pool, and we've been able to maintain uh, our competitive process and the integrity in that throughout this. Thank you. To Representative Loon. Uh, I have not personally, but members of our governing board and interim executive director have. What is your current enrollment? How many students? Uh, we currently have 159 students. That's in the high school? Yes. That's is that 9 school. through 12? Yeah, the high school is 11 through 12. Um, every year, Purpage uh, sees about a 20 uh, student decrease from the beginning of the year to the end of the year because you have you know, juniors and seniors coming uh, far away from home, and there's uh, always some movement within that. So we've seen uh, very traditional numbers uh, from the beginning of the year to the end of the school year, and our applicant pool for next year is around, or I'm sorry, our incoming class for next year is around 180. Is there a plan B at all? If, if the school was abolished, could it be reconstituted as a charter school or as a tuition-based school? At this time, we have not explored those options. Um, 
for the future of the school. An important aspect of the school is that it is open to all students statewide. And the fear, if the management of the school were to change, is that the students that need the school the most wouldn't have the access to the institution. Is your bill going to be continuing uh, to have the resources uh, that Privilege has provided in the past in such an excellent way? for music education statewide and for music educators. Uh, my name is David Menneke. I teach music education and have found the Perfect Center in the past to be an extraordinary resource for teaching students how to teach music and theater and dance. In, you, in your plans uh, that you have and what you're putting forward, uh, is that um, being reconstituted? It's absolutely a priority, and I'm going to let uh, our governing board vice chair uh, speak to the outreach plan. We plan on having a board retreat in July, which we, in which time we will be forming our long-term strategic plan, assuming everything goes really well with the legislature, uh, in which case we would be developing a different plan. Um, so could you rephrase your question uh, again? Well, I, yeah, the resources you've had, you've had um, arts resource people who, music teachers, theater teachers, visual arts teachers, dance, have been able to access, uh, asking them, do you have a, a curriculum, do you have textbooks, do you have resources you can use, um, that I found that to be an extraordinary resource for the Center for myself, teaching those, for prospective teachers, having all of those materials in place. Because that, that is yeah. something that has gone by the wayside. That you know, I know that in, in our my field, the boards that I'm on, we're very desirous to have that. The plan would definitely be to continue that and actually to increase what it's doing right now. Um, the library is located in a not particularly ideal spot at Perpich at the moment. There's a lot of stuff still in boxes, so we have some plans to make it accessible more to students and also to all the teachers, educators across the state of Minnesota. I'm going to ask, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask that we allow the, the media okay. to continue to ask questions, and if you can follow up with her afterwards, that would be great. Um, I just actually wanted to ask Representative Freiberg to, to speak briefly to, the question was asked about the plan, um, what happens uh, afterwards? Sure, I'm <clears throat> Mike Freiberg, I live in Golden Valley where the Purpose Center is located. Um, I'm a state representative, my district is across the street from the Purpose Center, essentially. But, um, you know, the the... Auditor, the legislative auditor's report laid out a few different possibilities of what could happen, and it did say that the legislature could consider uh, abolishing it, but it said for it to do that, there had to be plans in place for what to do with the students, what to do with the outreach programs, and so forth, and the bills that we've seen so far in the House don't do any of that. It hasn't laid the groundwork at all, so there really is no plan in place. So. That's right. And that's irresponsible, absolutely. Um, I mean, there was any a, questions? Yeah. Representative Thiessen, in one of the committee hearings, suggested this is just being used as a bargaining chip to try to exact something that the Republicans really want, uh, like tax credits uh, for private tuition, things like that. Um, how do you respond to that? Well, I think, you know, if, the, if that's the case, playing politics with 159 young people and their families is incredibly inappropriate. And so that's why, you know, we are here uh, today is to say that Perpich is valuable, it's valuable to our state and our region, and we're standing up for it. So if it's, it's a game, we're not interested in playing that game. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I do have one question, oh, actually. Mm -hmm. I remember reading in the audit how there was one of those struggles with Perpich was an absence of an admissions director for a time, and something that I'm curious about is whether or not there is a a system in place for an admissions director to sort of take uh, to take the reins and to do a lot of work with outreach, especially into communities of color. Thank you for asking that question. We actually have a new admissions director that we brought on in November. And she's been doing a phenomenal job, um, you know, in a short amount of time in terms of getting the word out uh, throughout the state as much as possible from 
um, a marketing perspective, and uh, we are developing a plan, which will happen in part during this uh, strategic planning process, but to involve uh, more community stakeholders in terms of what do you want to see from Purpage, um, getting everything from getting our materials out in multiple languages to holding events and performances um, in communities that are underrepresented at Purpage. So I will just say that we have a really strong commitment to equity, and that's 100% uh, at the core of our admissions plan. Thank you. Okay, and thank you for uh, coping with our, our little bit of a delay here, and we appreciate everyone who came up. Thank you.